Bold TV. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Bold TV. Bold TV is powered by Bold Heart Initiative, and Bold stands for Beautiful Outstanding Ladies with Disabilities. We come to you every Saturday by 10.30 a.m. without fail, bringing you information, entertainment, and everything around disability and its related issues, shedding the gender light. This episode is not an exception, and to have a great conversation, I have amazing, beautiful, outstanding ladies with me. They will introduce themselves in a bit, but just to let you know that our topic today is understanding accessibility for persons with disabilities. To catch other episodes of Bold TV, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can visit that channel by typing www.youtube.com forward slash at Bold TV underscore Bold Heart. In fact, you can just search for Bold TV or Bold Heart on YouTube and the channel will pop up. You can also follow us on our Facebook page and you'll be able to view episodes. That's www.facebook.com forward slash Bold Heart Network. We always like hearing from you. You can contact any of the co-hosts on the show, Afion, Osaki, Florence, myself, Oluwato Misen, or you can write us on boldheartnetwork.info at gmail.com. All right, having had said all that, we must appreciate all our online audiences for keeping it real with us since 2020. We appreciate you for staying the course with us and joining us in becoming disability champions, ensuring that issues are brought to light. So today, our focus is understanding what is accessibility for persons with disabilities. So as it is our culture, we'll ask the ladies in the house to please introduce themselves by way of their names, what they do, the types of disability or type, and where they are resident. And so to kick off the introductions, I would like Osaki to start. And after that, Afion. Thank you. All right. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, audience. Um, Osaki Teresa Georgi. I reside in Porta Court, River State. I'm a polio warrior. Um, I'm a person with disability. I'm an advocate for personal disability, member of Bold Heart Initiative, Volunteer in Fair Care Foundation, and a farmer. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have you all the way from Onelga in River State. Farmer Extraordinaire. Afio. All right. Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to another beautiful Saturday morning. My name is Afio Metem. I live and work in Uyo, Apaibum State. I use a wheelchair from spinal cord injury and I am a member of Bold Hearts Initiative. As always, it's a pleasure to have you up here. So, Hannah, please introduce yourself. Go ahead. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, I welcome us to the new edition of Bold TV. My name is Major Hannah. I live and work in Abuja. I work at the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Thank you, Hannah, for joining us. It's always a pleasure having you and your voice in the conversation. All right, so we have two other guests, and we have Barista Florence Marcus. She is a co chair of Amputee Coalition Nigeria. She's also a barista, and she is based in Abuja. And we have Azomta Andrew. She's a disability advocate. She's also the creative coordinator of Azumi Designers, and she is based in Port Harcourt in River State. All right, the focus of conversation is understanding accessibility for persons with disabilities. And of course, for us to lay a foundation, the question would be, what is accessibility? In your own understanding, what is accessibility for persons with disabilities? So I'm going to ask Apion, in your understanding, what is accessibility for you? Um, thank you. For me, accessibility, you know, means ensuring that everybody, regardless of their status, regardless of their ability, regardless of whatever it is that um, defines them, they are able to gain access to any 
part of their environment. They are able to interact with their environment without, with as little difficulty as possible. It, it talks about inclusion, ensuring that nobody is left out or denied opportunities because of maybe there are any difference that defines them. All right. Thank you, Afyam. So to her, it's about everyone and anyone, in spite of status of disability, being able to engage or enter into uh, a space or anything. All right. Awesome. So, Saki, as a polio warrior, what um, does accessibility mean to you? Thank you very much, Freki. Okay, to me, um, a big dash of inclusion in an activity, whether uh, persons are involved or not, you just create that that um, position or that um, environment whereby everybody, anybody that comes in, will be able to participate fully, no matter the kind of program, no matter how it looks like. But an intentional act of inclusiveness. Thank you. All right, of course, I think it's about intention and about including everyone. All right, Hannah, um, I would like to ask you, what is accessibility? But I would like to ask you what accessibility is according to the UNCRPD. What is accessibility? Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Accessibility is having equal access, equal opportunities to either products, services, or programs. It is not only programs, it is not only physical structures. In every aspect, every area of dealings in life, accessibility is where with no uh, help, with little or no help, independence, independently, you are able to access, you are able to choose a particular product, you are able to enter a particular structure, you are able to do one or two things without being led, being held by hand to do it. That's the meaning of accessibility. And it comes in different forms, it comes in different forms. And this is the main principle, this is the main basis that helps in all these products that we have so that everybody can spend it. All right, thank you, Hannah. So yes, the, um, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities does define accessibility because it is a cross-cutting theme in the different rights that are for persons with disabilities. And according to the UNCRPD, um, it talks about accessibility as referring to physical and mental conditions that enable a person with disability to approach, to enter, to stay in, to use, whether it's a building, transport, public space, other facilities, including information and communication and technologies on an equal basis with others. And we have said the same thing in the same and in different ways. It's about everyone being able to access. So having established what accessibility is, why is it important for persons with disabilities, especially women with disabilities, to be able to gain access? Um, Osaki, I'll ask you at this time, all right, thank you very much, Frankie. Uh, okay, one of the factors I will use is on economic benefit. You know, economic benefit is something that's generated by you can impute your own um, ideas and value to have a standard living. For example, when I say farmer, and people are wondering, she's limited disability, or she says she has a disability, how will she farm? I don't need to carry hoe, or I need to feed the beds. All of that is not necessary. All I just need is just to add my intelligence. There are a lot of things I could do. Men looking at the beds or men looking at the farm, I can tell you the ideas, what you think or what I know you should do or what I've read from books, all I from people. So when I tell you those things and you do it, and you see the value, that's economic benefit. So it's good that we have access to all of this. We could be able to add our potentials in life. Thank you. Awesome. So accessibility brings economic value to persons with disabilities. And she's used her own case as a farmer of how having access to information has helped us to be a better farmer as a woman with disability. Afio, why is it important to you as a paid of to have access and for us really? Um, I always say that um, you cannot be, you can't be more than you know, and you can't go further than what you know. 
So knowledge is important and being able to access information, be it online or offline is very essential. And you know, this speaks to the design of the digital space to ensure that persons with disability, because we live in an age where the information is gold. Information is the key to unlocking a lot of opportunities. So imagine if a person with disability or especially a woman with disability is not able to access the, let's be honest, few opportunities that are available by reason of gender, the opportunities are available and is able to build capacity so that they are, they are prepared and positioned for the opportunities that will come. But it starts with getting information. So it's important for the digital space to be accessible so that women with disabilities, persons with disabilities can have access to relevant information and thus position themselves for opportunities. All right, Afyang has talked about the importance of accessibility in the digital space and how it can be advantageous to women with disabilities, knowing what opportunities are out there, having information that can help them to transcend beyond where they are. Hannah, why is accessibility important? Okay, why accessibility is important? Um, number one, let me talk about women aspect first. It's very, very important for women. They, they will say that the underwood world works to freedom. Uh, for us to see this situation going forward, women have their quota, their contribution quota to the development of the society. So when you remove accessibility for women with disabilities and they don't have accessibility, they will not be able to contribute to the social development of the society. And thereby, the result that the society is supposed to have impact that this set of women will have had on the society will be lost. Class accessibility, as I try to say, not only meant for persons with disabilities, it is meant for everybody. That is why we've been talking about universal design, universal design. When you have the universal design, everybody with or without disability will be able to use these options, have access to information, the transport sector, everybody will be able to, to have as easy access to it. Thereby, it will contribute to the economic growth of the society. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hannah, for the contribution. You've talked about something very key when it comes to women, that access will allow women to add their own quota, bring value that they have to production, to productivity, to creativity. So it gives room for expression. All right, amazing. All right, so there are many types of accessibility. And we have physical accessibility. We talked about some of them during our last episode where we talked about accessibility in general. I think we're talking about the legal frameworks around accessibility. And we were able to speak to different types of accessibility where we talked about physical accessibility, referring to access to the physical environment, talking about the design of physical spaces, and products that can be used by persons with disabilities. And we also talked about information and communication accessibility. And we've heard in the conversations, many people have talked about access to information, access to communication, because the truth is that if a person is not able to hear you, the person may not be able to get what you are trying to communicate. So there's also the information and communication accessibility. There's also digital accessibility, and this has to do with technologies available for persons with disabilities, either as assistive technology or technology in the digital space, where it allows us to be able to have wider access to the worldwide as it were. However, there are also many types of, should I say, barriers that persons with disability face. There are common barriers to accessibility in our communities. And that's the truth of the matter. And we're going to spend some time here where we're going to talk about these barriers to accessibility that persons with disabilities face from theory, from experience, just like that. And so the first person I'm going to ask is Osaki, because this one runs deep. Can you talk to us about attitudinal barriers when it comes to accessibility? Go ahead, Osaki. 
All right, thank you very much. Okay, one of the barriers I want to really talk about now is the attitudinal barrier, whereby one just see a person with disability like useless, not important. What is she doing here? What is he doing here? You never even allow the person to express or to even hear, and just just a simple body movement, your face. Once person just walks in, or oh, I walk in, you couldn't even say hello. How are you? Your only your face. If you don't say any word, your face alone can really, really put me off. And with that, I will not be able to contribute or, in, or make an impact or even express myself. I'm already destabilized with just looking at your face. So that alone is a very, very wrong attitude that will not help a woman with disability. Thank you. Thank you so much, Asati. And imagine if there is an attitude no barrier. There is nothing that is going to transcend between. The two persons because there's already bias, there's already like formation of opinions that will not allow the conversation to flow. I remember soon after I had disability and I now realized that there were different types of faces. There were different types of responses or attitudes to when I show up in a room. So I realized that there was pity. Some people would just say, yeah, this fine girl. Then some people will now have disgust, like, I, I, can't you just stay inside here? Why are you not coming to worry us today? Some people will now have the one where, like, how are you stressing yourself? No love, that is scam. Why are you stressing yourself? Will let us help you. Let us be there for you. Say, no, you know, let us be there for you. Let us, you know, you want to just do everything. So I'll not come to it. And then the other one that was just outright negative, where the, the persons were not, like when it comes to persons with disabilities, I'm not interested. I don't care how packaged or how informative you are, you are broken, you are incomplete, not interested. And then you had the people that were open, open to meet you as a person. And all of these are attitudes. Interestingly, they are formed from opinions that can come from all sorts of information that they have received in the past or stereotypes are being reinforced by spirituality so many things cause attitude and a barrier to accessibility for persons with disability attitudinal barrier let me give an example if an employer has an attitudinal barrier towards accessibility for persons with disabilities a worker with disabilities will continually suffer in that space even if the person has access to work because her boss or his boss is close-minded to access so imagine anything that you need the boss will be like ah we have to even manage to give you employment now you want to come and look ask for reasonable accommodation and this and that so attitude is goes a long way to um block access for persons with disabilities okay Afio, would you like to speak any of our common barriers and and to accessibility and speak and while you're at it um as zomta said accessibility is important because it will allow persons with disabilities to do things they will not otherwise be able to do thank you so much Azomta. and sometimes you can also continue to drop messages and i'll read them out Afio. Okay, so um, I'm going to speak to information and communication barrier. And um, for me, this is very important because when people are not informed, then you cannot expect them to take action at the right time. And also you can't expect them to, you know, um, rise above where they are. And this applies especially to persons with disabilities. You see in the media, you know, mainstream media, you see in um, online and offline, you see a lot of places, even in um, institutions, you see places where, let's say, for example, a, visual, um, a visually impaired person or a, a, a hearing impaired person goes there and then they don't have signed any sign language interpreter position to be able to meet the communication needs of that person. A visually, a visually impaired person goes there and there's no um, provision for um, information in a format that is, you know, inclusive and accessible for that person. And I see this a lot, you know, working in the health sector, it's, I feel bad that, you know, many times persons with disabilities show up there and these, you know, staff, people are not trained on how to effectively communicate with them they tend to want to treat everybody the same without even, you know, like you said, the attitudinal barrier is the found, like the foundation because you go there and nobody bothers to ask you. They don't even ask, think that you would have an opinion. You know, they, they, there's this preconceived notion that everybody's doing you a favor. Whatever is done for you 
is a favor. And so you go there and, you know, be beyond the basics. They just do the bare minimum for you. Nobody's asking you, how can I help you? These things are not in place. You see our media, sorry for taking so long, but we see our media on TV and radio. So it's only now that in some of those um, stations that you find them, they actually have sign language interpreters. But before now, if you're hearing impaired or not for you, you don't know if Nigeria is on fire or not because you don't know what's happening. So yes, Apyong has hit something very strong. You know, last time we also talked about sensory disabilities and information and communication barrier is one thing that those who are hearing impaired or visually impaired or both, that's deaf blind, as well as all the other um, speech impairments, anything that is around the sensory impairment or disability really face. So information and communication barrier is something that we should take seriously. I ask somebody that if you have something to say, and nobody can hear you or understand you. Think about how frustrating that would be. And then where there are provisions made that can ease that, and then it's a barrier because they are not provided for. Think about how insensitive that is. So information communication barriers exist for accessibility, not just in how the information, content of information, but form of information. So we have to begin to think of how to remove this virus intentionally. Language, knowledge is essential for everyone. All right, in keeping the answers brief, Hannah, can you speak to any of the barriers that, um, common barriers? Go ahead, please. Okay, another barrier that we can and there's no light. And you go for it on the fourth floor. You have to expect person using the jet to come to the fourth floor with that provision of ramp or elevator. That's a big challenge. So but this can be corrected when we include accessibility. Before you come for meeting in any place, we should ensure that everybody needs or needs to assistance. In fact, there's no need for them to be helped. They can move around. They left their house individually to go for an event. It shouldn't be that at the point of the event, you now start carrying them that they want to help them. You need to elevate it. You need to be for this project. So, yes, so we've spoken so far attitudinal barriers, and we have also spoken about information and communication barriers, and we've also spoken about um, physical um, barriers, you know, and I just wanted to expound that the physical barrier talks about the environment from road, public transport, outdoor, indoor facilities, as long as it has to do with physical structures. It's so important for persons with disabilities to be able to access, use, it and come out freely and the barriers are real they look small when somebody just tells me there's just one small step i'm like mm -hmm. i hope you have eaten just one small wrap of fufu because you will carry <laughs> and they were like well i'm like i'm just saying <laughs> so while you are thinking it's just three steps it's a whole nollywood production to enter it with a wheelchair so think accessibility <laughs> All right, let's come back to Hannah. Hannah, talk about institutional barriers. Go ahead. Okay. Um, institutional barriers, these are laws, policies, guidelines that are page. With that, for civil persons with disabilities. Take, for example, the military sectors. You hear them saying that certain certain rights are recommended for social position, even in military generally. They, with these laws, with these policies, they discriminate against persons with disabilities. We have seen situations that uh, military personnel are not returned to post of their duty, they cure, they get their acquired disabilities. There is no job retention at all. Once you have disabilities, you see them that they are leaving them on. This is a big barrier. What says that a person with disabilities can act as an adult? What tells you that a person with hearing impairment cannot work in your workshop as a, as a military personnel? And if you continue to have these barriers, these policies, don't forget, we've said it, that it will, it will deprive society. 
to benefit from the abilities or the potential that people have. Thank you. Awesome. So institutional barriers are very subtle sometimes because when a policy is set up in a company without input from a person with disabilities, there's a tendency for that policy not to be well grounded. We see it a lot where you go to, let's say, the aviation sector and they say, no, you cannot travel alone, it's against policy. You know, it's said very casually, but then it has denied access to transport it as a denied access very casually it's, it's a policy and it is truly their policy but it was an uninformed policy that has caused a barrier to access you see where even lack of policy can become an a barrier to access so there's um, a lady with disability who talked dolapo who talked about how she became visually impaired on her job <laughs> And if not for God, they were re- they were just waiting when you are blind, bye bye, like severance by go, severance check. But policies in place will allow for there to be a plan for acquiring disability as a worker. So that a person, the answer to that is not bye bye because you just acquired a disability. And yes, many people have lost their jobs just because there was nothing in place to protect them from losing that job because they lost their had gained or acquired a disability their disability while they were working. So there's so many cases when somebody says, oh, you must turn print and doesn't give an alternative. What now happens to a person who is a double amputee and does not have hand? Where would the thumb come from? So sometimes we make these policies without full consideration and they can deny and limit a person from accessing services and products. So to wrap this up, where we now begin to talk about what can begin to be done, there is a barrier that I want to speak to. It's not an external barrier, it's an internal barrier, and I call it personal barrier. I tell someone that no matter how wide a door is kept open, if you do not walk through, you cannot access what is on the other side of the door. And so personal barrier to accessibility comes when a person with disability themselves has limited their access to accessibility. Where you feel that what is before you is not something you deserve. You have internalized, you have imposter syndrome, you've been devalued. So no matter how access is provided, job is provided, this is provided, you cannot enter because you feel that you are not worth it or worthy. Especially persons with disabilities too, who are not informed on their rights and how to be able to demand or insist or assert their rights, that can also be a problem where they are denied access because they're not able to come through. So this is a personal barrier and that's why we say in speaking out, we must always speak in to ourselves. All right, ladies, so that we don't lose more people, we'll begin to wrap up this session. And in wrapping up, these are the last comments you're going to be able to make, so think well. So what you're just going to do is how can these barriers to accessibility for persons with disabilities begin to be eliminated? So I'm going to start with Osax. Okay, thank you very much. How can these barriers be eliminated? I will speak in two ways. One, I want to crown uh, what you said concerning uh, personal barriers for persons with disabilities, which is a very good point. Just to add it up, I will say grab opportunities because, like you said, no matter how they put their accessibility and you're not willing, there are a lot of times they want to call and say, Can you come and speak on this? Can you come and do it? Even if you've not tried it before, once it comes, just say yes and tell God to help you. And most times they give you like timeline of one week or two weeks or whatever. Accept it first, then digest it and see how you can pull through. The moment you do that, you've helped yourself and you've helped the other person. Then in a general note for the public, whatever you're doing, just think accessibility. Thank you. Whatever you're doing, think accessibility. Persons with disabilities, don't rush to say no. Just calm down first. Afia, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, I think intentionality is the key. And this will begin by first of all, implementing existing laws. It's, we keep talking about this. Meanwhile, there is a law in place. There's an act in place. How much of it has been implemented? What has been done with regards to that? We are, we've, um, we are also, we signed, we are part of the we, we, uh, UNCRPD um, treaty. How much of it have we domesticated and executed? That is the problem. 
because it's not a lack of policy in some cases. It's not a lack of policy. It's not a lack of. It's a lack of willpower. Are we willing to? We wait. You know, even that. You know, unfortunately, it surprises me when you know we have leaders that are, have access to um, information, are, are able to see firsthand what happens elsewhere, and then they come back and somehow it doesn't. There's that shock. It's not there. That is there a way we can, you know, take what is we have seen and then make it happen here. But everybody just, you know, like the last time when I remember when there was a big brouhaha about the son of a former governor being denied. That's the only time we did. Oh, so these people have children with disability. He used to concern them. Eh? So let's not wait. You cannot, it's like saying there's fire in your neighbor's house. Eh, as long as it's not in my house. It, fire will not take permission before crossing the fence. So, so let's not wait. In whatever capacity we find ourselves, persons with disabilities, persons without disabilities. Whatever you do, even when you're building your personal house, ask yourself, if a person with disability comes here, can they get in? And then if you're a person with disability and you have access to a certain environment, see how you can advocate as much as possible to bring about change, no matter how small. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. And I like how you took it back to our duty bearers, the government, you know, upholding existing laws because they exist, they are there. So I thank you for taking it back. And I also thank you how you now took it from the government, taking it to the average citizen who feels very unbothered that it doesn't really concern them because it's not in an immediate sphere of concern. So this is it. If you are offering a public service or product, think accessibility. We need you to be intentional about thinking. Can every and anyone access my product or service? So it's something I'm going to ask anybody who's listening out there to think. I don't think you don't need our money. We have money. You need it. So think and make it accessible. All these banks, let me not go far. Engineer Hannah, go ahead, please. Another thing that I can be doing is having empathy. Empathy is putting yourself in that position. You see them as you want them first. Most times we talk about different barriers, we talk about civilian barriers. People will focus on disability instead of focusing on you as human beings. Right? See them as person friends. They are human. They have rights to everything. Then you have empathy for the disabilities that people might have. It. When you have that, and you know that you don't need to treat when you have the expert, there will be no place to treat them less. Another way that we can eliminate this barrier is having universal design. We all have Android phones today. The same phone that you are using, a blind person can pick it and use. All because there is universal design of that phone. If all our services, all the code docs, the structures are based on universal design, which are easy to use, easy access with some other features. If all our things are based on universal design, it will be easier. There will be no barriers. Definitely every barrier. I think with this, we can have a, a success while talking about accessibility and accessibility. Awesome. Absolutely great conversation. So to wrap this topic up, we've been able to understand what accessibility means for persons with disabilities. And in the line of the conversation, we've shared the gender light and we've spoken to the external factors, to the internal factors. But the reality is this is still a challenge in Nigeria and in many parts of the world. And we can begin to bring about change in creating access. Put yourself in another person's shoes. Remember the cycle of life when you're building those upstairs. You know whether you'll be sleeping in the boys' quarters after some time. So just think about life and think about access every time. Access for all. Access for all. Your place of worship. Are you denying some of the sheep from being able to access worship? Think about accessibility for all. Because accessibility is meant for all, not some person. So do not be a perpetrator of inaccessibility. So that has been our episode on Bo TV. We hope you learned something, one or two things. And we hope that you're going to take actions concerning the recommendations and the call to actions that the ladies in the house have preferred. We come to you every Saturday by 10.30 a.m. with great and amazing episodes. And next week will be another exciting one. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, 
please do so www.youtube.com forward slash at bold tv underscore bold heart if you have not followed us on our facebook page please do so www.facebook.com forward slash bold hearts network do you want to write to us to be on the show as a participant do you want to have an opinion do you want something to be talked about relating to disability and gender you can write to us bold hearts network.info at gmail.com or reach out to any of the co-hosts Saki, Afyong, Florence, um, Lua Tomisin and myself and we will be able to respond to you. So until we come your way next week Saturday 10.30 a.m. Don't be a perpetrator of inaccessibility. Be an accessibility champion. Ladies unmute yourself and give them blow kisses. Don't even say bye. Just blow kisses. TV.